This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Rise up. Rise up. This is your season. This is your time. This is your moment. Your destiny is at hand. The destiny of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, it is at hand. As you make that decision, you begin to carve and chart out that path and blaze that trail so that others can follow on behind you. Time to make that decision today. Men, it's our time to rise to another level at the 2020 Mentality Conference. Join us online September 11th and 12th for two power-packed days with three dynamic speakers. When you find the, the will of God for your life, it's the greatest, most peaceful adventure. You don't want to miss out on this revival of manhood. Mark your calendars and register now at creflodollarministries.org. going to jump right into the Word of God this morning. We want to talk about overcoming uncertainty. Overcoming uncertainty. This is a very uncertain time in which we are living. We are in a place where we really have to lean in with our faith, knowing that God's plan is available and that we have what we need to win in this life. And so we have been talking about getting out of the boat. We've been talking about how important it is to understand that as long as we sit back, as long as we wait, then things in our life will never change. But as we understand through Peter's example and through studying in Matthew chapter 14 over the last couple of weeks, we've laid hold of the fact that There are possibilities. There are tremendous things that are available on the horizon for us today. But you know what? God's not going to force it on us. It's going to be based on us making decisions of quality that align with his plan and arresting the spirit of fear. And so I felt led this morning to take my time and kind of dissect this subject of uncertainty and the fear of uncertainty. Because we know that there is uncertainty, but also there is the fear of it. And so we just want to shine the light on it and expose the enemy this morning and to continue to remind ourselves that he is defeated and under our feet. He has no authority in having access into our lives and preventing us from moving forward. You got to make up in your mind that I'm going to move forward. I am progressing. I have progression in my life. I'm not going to be stagnant. I'm not going to sit back and wait. I'm not going to make excuses. I have a plan. I have a mission from God. I have an assignment for God. I have a purpose in my life. And bless God, I'm going to see it revealed. And so we will, by the end of this message, I'm just believing that you'll begin to operate at a level of faith and begin to renounce the spirit of fear and to send it a notice it says you are not welcome here anymore in my life you have no authority you have no place to cause me to be at a place of going backwards a place of containment we bind the spirit of containment today we bind Anything that will prevent us from experiencing and enlarging the territories that God has for our lives. And so as we discover uncertainty, 
we know that once we get out of the boat, we run the risk of what may or may not happen. We understand that once we make a quality decision that we in and of our own selves run the risk of things possibly not working out as we endeavor or on the other hand, we run the risk of things just thriving and soaring and flourishing. And so the enemy dwells in the place of uncertainty and doubt, suspicion, uh, all these things are places in which he can dwell because it opens the door to darkness and unbelief. And so we understand that there are risks associated with the call of God and with obeying God. Uh, but many people fear the unknown because of the risk that is involved. Some people are just afraid to do anything, are at a place of being paralyzed in the midst of the storm. You can become so contained and so afraid that you don't make any motion and that you find yourself stuck. And it was the disciples who just were stuck in the boat as Peter decided that he was going to step out in faith and to face the things that he desired and the dream that he had to see Jesus and to walk on the water and get out of the boat. And so we have to understand that fear uh, is evident. Uh, fear knocks on the door. Fear will always question, why are you doing that? What is the purpose of, how, why is that important? You don't need to do that. And so in many instances, people will become paralyzed because of the fear and uh, the uncertainty of the unknown. But I'm reminded in 2 Kings chapter 7, I'm reminded of the four lepers who made a decision that they were not going to sit there and die. They made up in their mind that I have a purpose. I'm not going to starve myself to death. I'm not just going to wait and just watch life pass me by. But I'm going to do something about it. And so I love this story here of this example of chapter 7, verse 3. It says, And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate, and they said to one another, Why sit we here until we die? So you have to ask yourself the question, just like they had to ask themselves this question. As they sat at the entrance of the gate, uh, four leprous, wondering, and thinking, why are we going to sit here until we die and just wait it out? He says, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we'll die there. He says, we sit here, we die also. He says, now let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And you know what they did? The scripture says in verse, verse 5, they rose up. Instead of just sitting there watching life pass them by, calculating the uncertainty of whether or not they would get up, and go into the city and the possibility of the famine there causing them to die or even just staying there where they were at the gate and dying just being at the gate. So they rose up to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, Behold, there was no man there. You know what, child of God? You've got to rise up. Things are not going to change in your life as long as you sit back, wait, wish, and hope. There comes a point in each and every one of our lives that we have to make a decision that I, like this leprous man, am going to rise up. 
I am not going to settle with everything that's going on around me. So they got up, the scripture says here, and they went into uh, the part of the camp of Syria. And then in verse 6, it says, For the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and noise of the horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. So it's ironic that as the leprous guys made a decision that they were going to get up instead of just sitting, waiting to die, all of a sudden God got involved. God got involved to the point of he intervened and caused the Syrian host to think that it was chariots, that it was horses, and that there were things that were going on. And so the enemy sitting there wondering, someone is coming against me. And you know what happened? In verse 7, they fled. The scripture says they arose and fled in the twilight, left their tents, left their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And see, that's the thing about the enemy. The enemy is a thug. He will run in fear when you resist him. The Bible says, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So when you face the enemy, you face opposition, obstacles, challenges in your life, those things have to dissipate. And so it says, when these leopards came into the other part of the camp, they went into one tent, they did eat, drink, carried thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Child of God, you know what? They would have never inherited the silver, the gold, the drink, the eating, the raiment. They would have never inherited those things if they had just sat there and waited until they died. And they said to one another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. We hold our peace. For we tarry till the morning light, and some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. But you know what? They were uncertain sitting there. They didn't know the risk that they would run. But they didn't allow the fear associated with that risk to keep them from getting up and going. God got involved. God started whispering to the host, start whispering in their ear. All of a sudden, they're like, ah, we are running because we don't know what's going on. Satan's afraid. He's afraid of you. He's afraid of you making a decision, stepping out in faith, and you know what? When you make a decision, he will run and he will hide as we make a quality decision to submit ourselves unto God. It's time to rise up. Say this with me. I rise up right now in the name of Jesus. You have to make up in your mind, I rise up. Jesus rose, therefore I am rising up out of my circumstance that have stranded me, that have paralyzed me, that have caused me to stay in the fear, that has kept me in the boat, kept me in shame, kept me in following the same pattern that my, you know, my mother, my parents traveled, the same pattern that my great-grandparents, the same pattern. But I'm telling you, at some point in your life, You've got to get to the point where it becomes so important that you're willing to not allow fear to keep you from moving forward. So they decided to take a risk and go to the enemy knowing that the worst thing that could happen to them is that they would die. They were willing to take a risk. We've got to understand that God is never going to do anything to hurt us. 
He's always has you on his mind to bless you, to cause you to prosper, to give you a future, and to give you a bright outcome. So we can focus on what God's word says, focus on his plan, instead of worrying about the enemy. Well, they're going to talk about me if I get up and die, and if I rise up. You know, they're going to be saying ugly things. They're going to hate on me. They're going to persecute me. They're going to think ugly and ill things about me. But you know what? You cannot let that stop you from moving forward. You cannot allow the enemy's words to have more of an elevated opinion than the word of God. God is never going to do anything that will hurt us. He's always, always, always going to bless your endeavor, to bless you, to cause you to succeed and to flourish and to thrive. Just like God got involved with the four leprous men. And then God just began to whisper into the Syrians' ears and make them think that they were under attack. And then as a result, we see how they were able to escape. And as a result, the lepers escaped poverty. Think of that. They escaped starvation, child of God. When you make a decision, you're escaping the ill, the curse, the limitations, the boundaries, the parameters of tradition. I mean, you got to understand, they were lepers. So it wasn't where, you know, there was any possibility that, you know, all of a sudden the trajectory of their life was so great. But you know what? They said, we're not just going to sit here because we are lepers, and we certainly are not going to just die. So they got up, and instantly they went from a state of poverty and starvation to being wealthy, to having the silver, possessing the gold, having the raiment, and then the scripture says, not just in one tent, one time, the scripture says that they entered into another tent and carried thence also and went in again. So we're talking about the double blessing this morning. We're talking about double for your trouble, bless God. Because when you make up in your mind, though trouble is going on all around me, lack, poverty, insufficiency, but you know what? It doesn't mean that I have to have trouble on the inside of me because I am blessed to be a blessing. And I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And God causes and commands the blessing on my life. So don't let the prostration of depression overwhelm you today. Rise up. Rise up out of suicide ideation. This is the enemy who says, kill yourself. No, you make up in your mind, I have a promise. I have a God. He has a plan for me. I have a purpose in life. And you can escape despair, discouragement, depression, devastation. You can get rid of all these things in your life, but it begins like the lepers when you make a decision like they did in verse 5, that they're going to rise up. So I speak to you this morning. I prophesy to you this morning. Rise up. Rise up. This is your season. This is your time. This is your moment. Your destiny is at hand. The destiny of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, it is at hand. As you make that decision, you begin to carve and chart out that path and blaze that trail so that others can follow on behind you. Time to make that decision today. Glory be to God. So we know that the fear of the, the, fear of the unknown creates a risk. 
But we have to remind ourselves about our relationship with God and the fact that God has us and we build our identity and we build our foundation upon his word and upon what he says for us to do. People said Evers Presley would never be an entertainer. They said Oprah Winfrey, she was unfit for TV. They said Steve Jobs, when he got fired from his job, oh, you're just worthless. But you know what? They didn't quit. And this morning, you cannot quit. You've got to make up in your mind that I'm going to move forward. Though it may be uncertain, it may not, you know, be all pretty looking right now, but that's all right. Circumstances will change. And we have this grace on our life for change and to operate according to the word of God. The world is looking for us. The world is looking for you. The world is looking for the children of God to begin to walk in the assignment so that their lives and our lives can be a living testimony. If it were not for the church, if it were not for the body of Christ, this world would be going to hell in a handbasket. But thank God for the light. Thank God for the body of Christ. Thank God for faith in what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. Thank God for the grace over your life so that we can show the world that there is another way. And his name is Jesus Christ. And so we have to allow our lives to be a testimony. We need to recognize that God has made us for a purpose and that our lives matter. And we must resist the fear of failure, the fear of taking risks, the fear of uncertainty, resist laziness, the fear of change. We must resist what these things will cause us to do so that God can do something supernatural in our lives. Say supernatural. That's who you are, supernatural. And so I want us to um, really be stirred up concerning this because we want to look at some of the things that prevent us from experiencing and overcoming uncertainty. Look at Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Because we know that there are faith killers, there are blessing blockers. There are all kinds of things that we must resist and we have to deal with when it comes to overcoming uncertainty in our life. I had one of the most devastating times of my whole life was when my mother transitioned to go home and be with the Lord. But I had to tell myself, rise up. When I went back to her home and started gathering her things together, it took every function of faith on the inside of me just to walk through the doors because I knew that I had to overcome the negative emotion, the spirit of fear, depression, um, grief, sorrow. You have to understand that you have the spirit of God on the inside of you and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so there's always this possibility of the unknown and things not working out because of the unknown. But rest assured, God's got you. Disappointment that's not dealt with can turn into discouragement. Taffy Dollar reveals how everyone can have victory and walk on top of their situations in her new two-message series, Help, I'm in Need of Encouragement. Available today for your love gift of 15 U.S. dollars or more. Understand that just like Jesus dealt with disappointment on the cross in his life and ministry, people betrayed him and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And we have to understand that people are human, they're imperfect, and they're going to make mistakes. But you know what our responsibility is? To forgive them. To help you bask in God's love, you can add Taffy Dollar's eye-opening book, Embracing the Love God Wants You to Have. Don't pass up your chance to have this combo today for your love gift of 35 U.S. dollars or more. 
The 2020 Ministers and Leaders Conference is here. Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar online with Making Adjustments for the New Age. Grace is a person. His name is Jesus, and that is the foundation that you build on. It's the foundation for your teaching on parenting. It's the foundation for your teaching on finances. It's the foundation for your teaching on spiritual gifts. It's the foundation. You can't leave this foundation and then just go teach a series. A lot of the weight of carrying ministry or what people think or where things are coming from for the ministry for the home is released. That burden is lifted. See, we keep trying to go to church growth conferences when we need to find a church health conference because a healthy church will grow by itself. Make plans now to be with us online October 6th through the 8th. Do not miss this revelation on making adjustments for the new age. Register now and secure your spot today. You know, if there's one thing I know, it is that prayer changes things. Glory be to God. When you pray, you give God permission to intervene and to interfere in your everyday affairs. So I wanna pray for you right now. Lord, I pray for every person watching. I pray for their family. I pray, come thy kingdom, be done thy will in their life, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. With long life, they'll experience salvation, redemption, restoration, recovery, pre preservation of life, long life. Lord, we just thank you today for the blessing of God overtaking them and overwhelming them in a way that they cannot help but to give you credit that this is your doing in their life. So we thank you for every person who's watching, Lord, for the peace of God, for the provision and the clarity of God in 2020 that their life will never be the same. They'll see you in a way that they've never seen you before. And so we thank you for the blessing that is at work and all that agree said, amen. God bless you today. Thank you so much for writing. Thank you so much for tuning in and being connected to this ministry. And so we also want you to know that if you wanna speak with one of our personal prayer counselors, you can feel free to contact us today. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to release the power of agreement so that we can come together and see God's will be done. God bless you. Do you need prayer for anything today? If so, contact us and let's take the matter before God in prayer. Post your prayer request online at creflodollarministries.org. We look forward to praying with you today. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to mygracelifeacademy.com. Thank you, partners and friends.